Hi. In previous videos, we've taken a look at these uh, little RD Tech power supply modules, and I'll link in the videos at the end if you haven't seen it, but they've been incredibly popular. And I've been watching over the years as they've been developing uh, better and better power supply products to the point where they practically own the market for these little power supply, uh, you know, standalone modules, and they're really quite remarkable. So I thought I'd take a look at the latest one. It's the RD60061. It's like a, a front panel type solution like this, and I have the optional uh, case. So we've done uh, several videos on this company's uh, products before. They're not actually RD Tech. It's Hanju Reading Technology, but I'll continue to call them RD Tech. Anyway, uh, that's their website. We'll link them in, and they're over on AliExpress, so I'll link them in down below. I do believe other sellers like resell them, but I'd recommend buying directly from the RD Tech um, AliExpress store. This one in particular, 360 watt output power, six amps um, maximum output current, zero to 60 volts output, and a it's just a buck uh, converter. So you need to put um, you can have anywhere from six to 70 volts DC input, and that will then give you a current corresponding uh, range, just I believe one volt below whatever input voltage you uh, feed in. So that's really quite remarkable in like a, you know, a 300 watt power supply switching, of course, you can't get any uh, linear stuff in something uh, this tiny. But this one goes for uh, $53 without the Wi-Fi module or $57, that's Yankee bucks, um, with the Wi-Fi module. So you might as well get the Wi-Fi module with it. And it comes with uh, two optional cases. I've got the big one, which we can build in our own uh, power supply into. Power supply is uh, separate and it comes with all the bits. Uh, the case is $32 for the long one or uh, $21 for a shorter case like this. It just has uh, binding post terminals on the back as we've seen in our uh, previous videos and you can power them from any external power supply you have available. But you know, I want something a bit nicer so I sprung for the uh, bigger case here. But as I said, you can use any power supply. You can salvage out of any old gear or anything like that from six up to 70 volts. Obviously, if you get a six volt one, you might be able to get five volts out of it, but that's all you can get. So it's not a uh, true SEPIC uh, converter one where you can feed in six volts and then get zero to 30 volts out. It's only a buck converter. Now I do actually have a uh, power supply coming, but it's in the mail. Let's take a look inside. All you get is just this info card. You can go download the data sheet. That's great. I don't like having uh, manuals in there. That's just, yeah, pointless these days. And we've got our little module. Isn't it cute? Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. For under 60 bucks US, that is a complete 300 uh, plus watt uh, switch in power supply with uh, the user interface and everything. We'll take that off. So there's our little uh, Wi-Fi module. That's only four bucks extra. Complete no-brainer. Why wouldn't you get it? This is a uh, temperature uh, probe adapter which we plug into the board and we got a spare little surface mount fuse and a couple of uh, spade lugs that we can then plug into our whatever power supply we choose to use. Yeah, so this thing really is uh, quite impressive. I, you know, I love the buttons. It does have a knob that's got indents on it. It's pushable. Yeah. Yep. Um, haven't looked at the uh, user interface yet. It's got an output on off button. It's only a single output. And one of the interesting things is that at first glance you might think this center terminal here is an earth terminal, like mains earth terminal, as you'd typically find on a uh, metal chassis, uh, you know, lab power supply, because it's green. And well, that makes sense, but it's not. Look at the little indicator there. This is actually for the battery charging mode. So in battery charging mode, um, this is the negative terminal, and this is the positive battery charging terminal, and they've color-coded it green. Why? We've got USB here. Uh, presumably you can do like firmware updating stuff. I set, V set. Memory. It looks like we've got uh, nine different memories there. Fantastic. And a nice power button and the buttons light up and a nice reasonable size uh, display. And that just snaps into the front of our case like that. I won't do it now because then it might be hard to get back out. But yeah, they've really um, upped their game over the years. Of course, I've done the <laughs> very famous video where one of their uh, power supplies caught on fire because they had a shorted out uh, ceramic cap. But they, you know, they fixed that uh, pretty quickly because it was just a physical location thing. I'll, I'll link in that video. It's very, it's quite educational. Anyway, there's our little socket for our fuse. So it looks like we have um, little tiny SM output fuse. That's nice. Anyway, um, nice honking relay there. 
And I'm not sure if those caps are in parallel or not. You shouldn't have that much capacitance on the output of a uh, lab power supply. But anyway, um, 80 volt caps, um, ECD brand. I don't know anything about them really. Um, not a huge uh, fan on this thing, but it does have a fan. It will be uh, temperature controlled. We've got a big freestanding honking uh, resistor there. So that's interesting. Another fuse up there. So that'll be our input. So we've got an input fuse and an output fuse here. Uh, this goes over to our temperature probe. You, I won't try reverse engineering this. Of course, it's not open source. They don't uh, release the schematics, but I believe uh, some people have uh, reverse engineered the uh, RD tech ones. Did I even do it in a video? I think I... Anyway, we've got our main uh, display processor board down here. It looks like it's got an ARM-flavoured processor down there. Um, can I get that board out? I'll try. Uh, no, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get that out because of the binding posts that are soldered in there. So unfortunately, um, that's not going to work. Anyway, I do like the binding posts. They're, they're kind of like, uh, remind me of like the Agilent ones. Um, the hole in the side looks adequately sized. And those, they've got the metal on the uh, bottom. They don't have, and some metal on the top like that. So they're not too bad certainly seen a lot worse than that so I don't mind those the general feel and quality of this thing you know it, it really is quite uh, remarkable especially for you know a sub $60 power supply and this is completely standalone like you can just buy this the minimum for 52 US dollars feed in whatever voltage you want into here from any power supply you don't need any case you can just sit it on your bench like that and you're going to have a working uh, power supply up to 300 watts or the capability of uh, your input uh, power supply so yeah that's just like unbelievable how the market has just uh, you know they've just blown away this uh, power supply market so anyway uh proofs in the pudding so 300 watts say 95 uh, percent efficiency you'd be talking uh 15 watts um, in this thing and of course you'd need airflow to uh, get that out but uh, yeah it's it's certainly doable sorry it's uh, 360 watts anyway um, here's some basic specs as I said uh, 0 to 60 volts out uh, depends on the capability of power supply 10 millivolts uh, resolution output current setting uh, 0 to 6 amps with 1 milliamp resolution that's absolutely fantastic apparently it's got a uh, battery um, charging mode as well with 10 millivolt resolutions anyway output voltage accuracy is claimed at 0.3% plus 3 output current accuracy 0.5 plus 5 that's plenty 100 millivolts um, output ripple so of course that'll change with the output uh, current of course so it's not the world's best uh, low output ripple power supply but that's not its job it's just do, job is to just be a cheap general purpose high power lab power supply and it can do capacity and energy measurement as well. I want to check that out. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, it claims there's a 2% uh, error on that and a 1 volt drop. That's why I said if you feed in, say, a 24 volt, uh, if you've got a 24 volt power supply power in this thing, you should be able to get um, to 0 to 23 volts. It doesn't come with a uh, backup battery though, which is interesting. That'd be for your uh, real-time clock. So not necessary for general operation, but uh, if I've got one, I'll whack it in there. So we've got the optional uh, Wi-Fi module here. So we'll just whack that in there, make sure the pins are lined up. And Bob's your uncle, we're good to go. Uh, sorry, our uh, temperature probe, that'll go in there. But all we do is just feed in uh, any power supply into there and it'll do the business. So I'm going to hook up my uh, external supply here, which is a hon only 188 uh, watt capable, so we can't push it all the way uh, unless I uh, parallel uh, various supplies. See, these are not uh, the proper cage clamp ones, they're the lever ones. <laughs> what do you expect for the price? Right, so we should now have a fully working power supply. And yes, you could actually power this from batteries and you could, uh, and charging tech uh, stuffed into this case if you wanted to build a portable power supply, or you could even build it into your own custom case, whatever you want to do. And the bench supply is on, but the power supply is off, just residual. It's uh, drawing 611 milliwatts there. So let's turn it on. Ta da! See it boot up. Right, and DC power, wow, that's really quick booting, isn't it? And the uh, quiescent supply, uh, 950 milliwatts or so. The screen is really quite good, even at a high angle like this, quite readable, it's all, it's all color-coded on the sides 
quite nice. There's not much glare on that. Of course, if I hold it and put it up to the lights, you can see my uh, lights there. But anyway, yep, that screen's pretty good. No wackers. And it's a pretty uh, info-dense display. Look at this. So this is our uh, output uh, voltage, of course. This is our output current showing zero because it's not the uh, set voltage and our output power like this. Uh, so three decimal places on the current, as we uh, saw before in the specs, 10 millivolts resolution for voltage and uh, 10 milliwatts resolution for the power there. And we're in constant voltage mode. It's showing that we're using M memory uh, address zero there. So it's got actually 10 memory positions, does it? And I uh, don't know what the tick is. Anyway, uh, it's reading 26 degrees here in the lab, but it, you know, it's near enough. Anyway, that's using uh, that temperature sensor probe that's plugged into the back. And uh, milliwatt hours, there's our capacity. Brilliant, it's showing uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit there. Now it's got over voltage protection, over current protection. I believe they're only uh, like software protections as in the previous supplies. I don't believe it's got proper hardware, cro independent hardware crowbar protection. So if the software fails or locks up or does whatever, um, then I don't think that's gonna save your uh, product from uh, you know over voltage. The whole idea, if you don't know of over voltage, over current protection, let's say you're pairing up, you've built your new super duper expensive board and it's got $10,000 worth of parts on it, which is not uncommon. Trust me, I've worked on boards that have many tens of thousands of dollars worth of parts on. And you cross your fingers and you power up the power supply for the first time and you're powering your five volt rail from your bench power supply, but oops, you've accidentally set it to 12 volts or something like that. If someone comes along or they knock the knob, well, you would set your over voltage protection to say 5.1 volts. So regardless of, you know, where your stupid marketing manager comes along and twiddles with the knob and stuff like that, you don't want to blow up your tens of thousands of dollars worth of prototype hardware. So that's, yeah, that's an idiot marketing protections mode. Okay, it's currently set to uh, 5 volts and 6.1 amps and our input, there you go, 32.01. So it's measuring our input voltage, very nice. So let's turn it on. There we go. And it, it sort of like, I don't know if it ramps up like that. We'll have to get the scope on it. But let's try that again. It's ramping down. So yeah, it's ramping. I don't know if it has the ramp like that. It should be sharper, of course. Um, but there you go. It's set to 5.00. We're getting 5.00. By the way, I think they have learnt their lesson uh, using those multi-layer uh, ceramic caps on the board that uh, caught fire. So look at that, they're not using uh, MLCCs anymore, using those leaded ones. Are they, those uh, film jobbies? Or are they leaded ceramics? Either way, we're not going to get a uh, stress fracture problem, that's for sure. Okay, let's hook it up to the lab electronic load. I just got a constant current of uh, one amp here. So we'll just switch that on, just the default five volts out. So 0.997, so that's accurate. The voltage, uh, of course, has dropped. You could see there that it was actually, uh, yep, it's spot on there to uh, the least significant digit, no worries whatsoever. And of course, we're gonna have some, the reason this doesn't match is because uh, we've got the loss in the uh, little piddly cables here. We could, of course, do remote sensing. So it won't be lazy, Dave. I will actually uh, connect the external uh, sense. And by the way, when you're doing the external sense, make sure you get it around the right way. I've got the sense this is the sense banana plug on the inner part of here. If I actually put the sense on the outer part, so you're not going to be including the, uh, the voltage drop um, across this banana plug here. So just make sure that your sense one is in there like that and then your load on the other side. It's a little trap for young players. Okay, now I've uh, enabled sense mode over here so it will read the voltage from here instead of the input terminals. So if we switch this on, the voltage here should now match the one here because there's no voltage drop across the lines. Cool. So this is more than uh, meeting its specs. Very nice. So if I want to set my current, all I've got to do is press I set here. And you can see that's put a little purple highlight there. And of course, you can move that digit like that. All right. So I'll set it to uh, six amps now. So five volts is six amps. There we go. 5.99, 5.998. It's measuring bang on and we're now drawing 30 watts from this puppy and when I switch uh, the load off you can see that the fan has stopped so it is uh, certainly temperature controlled I switch it on and the fans going to be running but you can hear a little whir maybe but nothing offensive okay so I'm going to go into voltage set here I really don't like the 
the beep beep like that sounds like a Geiger counter or something like that anyway there's no real velocity control properly on here but of course if we want to go to uh, 30 volts we can just go 30 enter like that and bingo we're straight up to 30 and another thing is unless you go into some sort of uh, mode none of these buttons will do anything and that's what you want these controls shouldn't do anything unless you choose a particular mode so that's nice Tell you what, one thing I think is a bit of an oversight, if you go voltage set, okay, and you want to go, say, 30 volts, you have to hit enter. You can't just press that. It doesn't work. I would have liked to have seen enter like it be the same. And for those playing along at home, for the efficiency at 60 watts with this voltage input, because it could certainly change, focus you bastard, um, it could certainly change with the uh, input voltage. You'd have to fully characterize this thing. So it's only about 86.8% uh, efficient. So it's dissipating uh, 9 watts, this thing, but it's not getting hot. It's not blowing much at all the inductor they're fine the heat sink can put my finger on that no worries whatsoever so that's that's doing hunky-dory now this case supports a couple of different uh, power supplies one of them is a standard 150 millimeter by 50 millimeter and my power supply just turned up ta-da it's a uh, mean well um, RSP 320 series I got it from uh, Farnells and it's a uh, it's a 320 watt job so not quite the 360 watt max uh, capability but it was uh, cheap and mean well are uh, you know a reasonably uh, decent brand uh, power supply but uh, as I said you could like salvage a power supply out of practically anything and whack it in this case it's uh it's big enough to do that you may okay it may not have the standard mounting holes like uh this one is going to have so this one was uh 83 aussie bucks so roughly about the same price as the actual uh unit itself but you can get cheaper and i tried to get uh the recommended one from another aliexpress store but they uh refunded my money and just didn't send it yeah you can get them much cheaper there there's tons of different variants of uh, power supplies out here this one has has a little uh, temperature controlled uh, fan and the case comes with all the mounting hardware the fan a little uh, fan temperature controller with a probe and all the cables and all the screws and all the mains connectors all pre-terminated and insulated brilliant Okay, a mini teardown inside this mean well power supply. Doesn't that look really good? Uh, Rubicon main cap down here. Very nice. Old school dip. And the links, look at this. Um, single sided as you'd expect. Um, it all looks quite nice. Lots of uh, liberal celastic down there. And what are our output caps? Nippon Chemicon output caps. Absolutely fantastic. This is a Bobby Dazzler for all you fan fanboys out there. Get it? I'm here all week. Anyway, um, yeah, this looks really top quality. Look, ceramic fuse there. They're worth every cent, these Meanwhile ones. Quite nice. And is that a temperature sensor there running off uh, the primary side switching trannies? I think it might be. Pro tip. Don't daydream when you're installing your power supply because you'll install it backwards. Oh! Well, that went together nicely. That's a beautiful build. It's even got the uh, standoffs built into there for the uh, temperature controller, which supports up to uh, 6 to 70 volts uh, power supply, same as the uh, module itself. And it comes with all the cables. They're all pre-done. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I don't recommend having them tinned like that when they go into the uh, clamp connectors. But the only thing you didn't get was a couple of uh, shake-proof washers, which uh, would have been nicer. But yeah, everything's just pre-done. don't have to solder anything. Just screw it all in. Bob's your uncle. Although, just a reminder, if you do want a properly earthed uh, case, not that this power supply has an earth uh, terminal on it, because as I said, uh, that one is not an earth terminal. Maybe you could add your own to the back or something like that if you really uh, wanted to. You just have to remember to scrape off uh, some of the paint on the bottom side of here, because uh, this case is earth, but if you want it to go to here, or you could add your own separate wire to a proper earth lug, whatever. Okay, so quickly before I put it in the case, I just want to run some uh, basic uh, characteristic uh, performance curves just to get an idea of the efficiency over uh, various output uh, power. So I'll just start with uh, 32 volts because that's the maximum um, there. And it might be a typical voltage, for example, 0 to 30 volt uh, power supply. And just a reminder, it's taking uh, 940 odd milliwatts uh, quiescent. Okay, I'm drawing 150 watts output here. And uh, really, there's the uh, thermal, the hot spot, the biggest hot spot down there is like 47 degrees. And I can, uh, I can certainly touch that 
with my, uh, and touch the heat sink with my finger and I really can't hardly feel anything, nothing on the inductor over here. So, uh, and that's dissipating uh, the six watts. That's at 150 watts output at uh, 24 volts. So thermally it's okay, but of course, if you take it right up to its uh, 320, and I've set it to 48 volts total, so I've got them in series, and there we go, 48 volts input. So that's going to be uh, exactly the output of my Memewell power supply. But of course, the thing about this is, whilst it is a 360 watt capable power supply, really, because of its maximum uh, 6 amp uh, output current capability, you can't really get that 320, 360 watts unless you're at the extreme ends of the voltage. And most people just aren't going to be powering things at 48 volts, you know, 50 volts, 60 volts. So yeah, you might have that capability, but if you don't have the output uh, current and then... Alright, so you take all that data and bingo, please excuse the crudity of the model, didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it, the efficiency versus output current for a 25 volt uh, output voltage for 0 to 6 amps and that gave me 0 to 150 watts so that's you know typical of what sort of a maximum most people would use it at and I did it I got two uh, characteristic curves uh, for different input voltages so for a 32 volt input and for a 48 volt input this is the 48 volt input is the one that I'll be using um, with my mean well and you can put in a higher voltage of course but uh, at a 25 volt output higher voltage you're going to get um, less efficiency you, know, you expect a drop here there could be some inverse in the characteristic but that's unlikely generally a higher voltage you'll see the same curve again not sure what happened to this data point over here I entered my data correctly maybe I measured it wrong anyway there is a little uh, step down here at uh, 4 amps which is rather interesting maybe it uh, switches um, uh, switching mode there the uh, the controller at uh, 4 amps so that's interesting both of them uh, showed that and you know it's a pretty decent efficiency say you know like 90 95 odd percent but the efficiency does drop with the output voltage so I've done another um, little short short one where it got down to like like a maximum of 88 at uh, 10 volts output but anyway you could do these characteristic curves for every single parameter until the cows come home but you know it's pretty decent i thought it was supposed to have a temperature controlled fan but like it's switched off like the unit is off and the fan's going full blast and i can hear that sure i've got the lid off but still it's going like the clappers so i don't like that at all unless I don't know there's an internal jumper or something I don't know maybe I have to read the manual but ah uh, not happy with that it's constantly going all right let's check the ramp on time from uh, zero to five volts bingo there we go that's about that's 50 milliseconds per division so about 50 milliseconds there there's no uh, bad overshoot or anything like that so that's clean as a whistle all right let's try zero to 45 volts same time base there we go, exactly the same. But you'll notice if we switch it off, it is reading on the output terminals. Look how long it takes for those uh, output caps to discharge. So yeah, got large output capacitance. As I said, not ideal for a lab power supply because when it goes into uh, constant current mode, those uh, caps can potentially deliver um, overcurrent. So yeah, you've got to be careful of that. And off. Let's see how she ramps down. I mean, we've only got the uh, the uh, one meg load on the input. Bingo, there it is. Ramps right down. It's, you know, it's clean, but yeah, it takes a while. Check this out. We've got common mode noise to buggery. And yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not great, is it? And I've done whole videos on that. No, well, unfortunately, um, I'm now using an isolated scope and it's still there. So that's obviously coming either from the um, Raiden uh, supply module and or from the Memewell uh, supply and it's just passing straight through. So what I'm going to do now is power it back from the uh, lab bench uh, power supply so we get rid of the Memewell one and see if that goes away. And well, nope, that's not coming from the Memewell supply. That's coming from the Raiden module. Unbelievable. Look at that. Yep, that switching noise is absolutely horrible. Wow, I mean that that is really terrible. That's that's under no load. So at 45 volts output, that is uh, 20 millivolts per division. I've changed my probe. Here we are at 50 millivolts uh, per division. Let's drop it down to five volts. Bingo! It's higher at five volts. 
<laughs> Look at that. That's 100 millivolts per division. So that's peak to peak. You know, that's like 100, 200, 300, 400, almost like 500 millivolts peak to peak. Of course, if you take the RMS of it, it's not much. But I get, like that, that is, that's with no load. That's terrible, Muriel. So this is with my uh, Roden Schwartz lab supply. And let me switch the meme well in. And that's exactly the same with the uh, meme well supply there. Okay, that's off. Let's switch on a one, one amp constant current load. Yeah, you can start to see the ripple there. So that's off. It'll be thinner and flat. And on is that. So if I could just get rid of the high frequency crap, this thing would be all right. But uh, it's all over the shop. Don't worry about that, that extra stuff out there. It's just a triggering thing. There we go. That's six amps. So I think that that's where they're getting their 100 milli volt uh, spec for, yeah, that'd be two divisions. Yep, so that'd be 100 millivolts uh, peak to peak is what the uh, spec sheet says, but they don't tell you about the switching noise. So they're just talking about the uh, lower frequency ripple there, which at four microseconds per division, one, two, three and a half divisions there. You can calculate that yourself, what the re uh, switching frequency is. So that's five volts at six amps, 100 millivolts per division, like 700 millivolts uh, Peak to peak. Not great, is it? But I guess that's the price you pay for your 50 bucks at uh, 300 watts in a tiny little uh, module like this. It's, yeah, they've got to cut corners somewhere, but geez. You can add our own output filter in, but that'll have to be another video. Well, let's go back to the key site here. Five volts at uh, six amps there. We're looking at, you know, once again, the RMS uh, noise isn't bad, bad if you want to look at it that way. Uh, you know, 470 millivolts peak to peak. All right, I knew this uh, defibrillator tester would come in handy. It's got a big ass 50 ohm resistor in here. Um, so let's uh, single shot capture, uh, turning on uh, 40 volts here and uh, that'll give us a 30 watt load. Boom, there we go. Nice. And we'll switch that off. And that's a clean switch off too. And that is uh, turning on into constant current mode. You can see the uh, CC down there. And that's clean as a whistle as well. And let's try that going from 45 volts into constant current mode. Yep, there we go. A little bit of undershoot there, but that's normal. It's not doing anything strange, not oscillating. So that's quite nice. And then we'll have it coming back out of constant current mode. Oh, a little bit of overshoot there, is there? Teeny weeny bit. Let me try that again. A little bit of overshoot there, but nothing to write home to your mum about. So let's play around with the user interface here. You can uh, do shift lock, by the way, and that just locks absolutely everything. So you can't do a thing. That's fantastic. So let's go into the menu, shift menu, and we're in like Flynn. Now you have to press these arrow keys to go between the main uh, options at the bottom. There's a the firmware for those playing along at home. And uh, here's where we uh, set up all of our uh, programmable settings. M0 is the one when you uh, power up. We'll go up, we'll go enter. And we can go V set like that, and we can just go five volts. So let's say we wanted five volts at half an amp for M0. Then we press enter like that, and that will store it. And it took me ages to figure out how to get out of the menu. By the way, you've got to press that again. There's, you can't do shift menu or anything to get out of it. And then we can simply uh, recall those. So let's go out and we can go, uh, well, that'll be our boot. So let's boot that up and see if it goes to five volts at half an amp. There it is there. Beautiful. And then we can go to M1, for example, and that'll show us. And there's an option uh, not to have that pop up. So anyway, we, if we want to uh, select that, then 5 volts at now 6.1 amps. There you go. So in the main menu uh, set up here, what we've got is uh, call OK. That's actually, as I just said, to uh, call out like when you press the memory buttons, um, it pops up with that menu. Uh, power on is whether or not you want the output to switch on when you actually power it on. Or not usually, you, you know, you wouldn't have that just in case. Beeper is obvious, logo is obvious, English. There you go, for those playing along at home. English and Chinese, that's it. And the interface, we the options we have are USB, Wi-Fi or TTL. TTL doesn't work apparently. USB, it looks like it's going to give us a serial port from the USB, 115,200 board. And measure here is how fast you want the voltage reading on the display to read back. So that's the sample rate, basically. 
And in this menu here, we can choose which uh, display we actually want, uh, our voltage and current display or a waveform display. So let's give that a bowl, shall we? Get out of there and bingo, we've got a graph. So let's switch it on. There you go. And it just shows you the voltage and it just basically graphs over time. That's, you know, kind of neat, but yeah, I don't know, niche use. And then if we boot up after selecting Wi-Fi, it comes up with uh, Wi-Fi config. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. They've got both Android and iOS app. It's called RD Power. Um, only 100 plus people have downloaded, so we'll install that. Wi-Fi is not connected. Connected slave address. It says it was connected at the slave address. Can you have more than one? Probably. Uh, if I press connect, it says connected, but it doesn't like turn green or anything like that. I don't see anything changing. No, she ain't working. Well, that Wi-Fi didn't work at all. I couldn't find the device in the list of Wi-Fi products, so I don't know what the deal is. The manual's not the best. Let's just say that. Anyway, um, USB uh, does work. It shows up. I just plugged it in, Windows 10, and it showed up as a serial port. Unfortunately, I've tried a terminal program. I can't get any response from it, so it could be a custom interface. It doesn't say anything about supporting Skippy commands or anything like that. So we'll have to download the uh, program. This is the manual here. It's good to know it has no virus. <laughs> if you're any software problem, Please allow it, blah, blah, blah. So we'll install the software. Okay, it's just a single exe. 282 kilobytes. That's what I want to see. Let's be serial install. Jeez, it's really old school. Done. Uh, that's that's the driver. Okay. PC software. It, it was just the driver. Unzip files and double check to install the driver operate. The software's not there. Let me go to this one. This, this is a different address. Okay, we've got a RAR file now. Okay, looks like that's going to do the business. Failed. Virus detected. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> More information. Wow. This is not a good look. I got exactly the same uh, virus warning error under um, Opera here, and I'm not logged in. It just, yeah, it detected it. No, I'm not going to bother. I, if, if that's... <laughs> Like, sorry, I just look, here it is. Here's the software. This is what it's going to look like. It, it's probably going to work. Um, it doesn't support, looks like it doesn't support standard Skippy commands, although I guess you could uh, debug this and see what it's actually sending and things like that, because it is a serial port. should be pretty easy to uh, decode it and stuff like that. You can have multiple units and things like that, and this is where you can do firmware updates. So you've got to install this uh, software, which does not contain a virus, um, to download your firmware. And... Uh, I don't know why you might need the driver because it did install as a serial port. Anyway, I, I'm just not going to bother. No. Sorry, someone else can do it. Now let's try out this battery charging functionality. There's nothing in the menu that you can do for this. It's like completely automatic. So let me actually hook a battery up here and watch this symbol here. It turns red and it's detected it. There you go, 1.27 volts. So, like, I don't know where you set up the charging parameters for different types of batteries. Um, I, I don't get it. So I can only presume that we have to manually do it like this. So 1.5 volts, for example, half an amp, whatever. We've got our battery connected, it's 1.27. Let's press on. It's constant current charging at half an amp. Where's your cutoff voltage, I guess? Well, you can set maybe over voltage protection, could you? It's rudimentary, but that's no different to a regular bench power supply. Like, you can do exactly the same thing, so I don't get it. Okay, it might give us a total uh, capacity, but like, oh geez, I'm not going to write home to my mum about it. Now, there is a table of like different battery types in the manual and things like that, but it doesn't really make sense of how it works. Um, and they're linked to an operational video of the battery charging mode. There's no video there, so I don't know. So there you go, that's the Raiden RD6006 uh, lab power supply. And for 53 US bucks delivered, 
for the module. It is actually very impressive value for money. Sure, there's a few uh, issues with it, but geez, you know, the user interface is, is pretty good. Its performance, apart from uh, the noise on it, is uh, pretty good. And of course, you can't uh, complain about the flexibility in the specifications, really, apart from, oh, it'd be nice if it uh, did some uh, boost converting as well. But geez, you know, um, that's a tough ask for uh, something like this. So they do have other modules if you're into uh, combined buck boost or sepic uh, converters. Uh, you have a specific need for that, like you might want to run it from a single lithium uh, ion battery, lithium polymer, uh, poly put the kettle on battery or whatever and uh, you need to get like 0 to 30 volts out then there's, they have different modules for that but the previous one we looked at grant it was only uh, 20 bucks this is you know 50 bucks um, and another 23 dollars or whatever uh, for the case which is really quite remarkable it's quite a nice case and how it all builds together and how it supports you know many different times of, uh, types of uh, both open frame closed frame or other types you could even put a linear uh, supply in there if you really wanted to you know drill a few Few holes and put in a big toroidal transformer and you know a bridge rectifier and all that sort of you know old school uh, business and uh, it's very flexible in terms of being able to uh, power this thing from many different sources so if you want to roll your own case and uh, provide your own power solution then you know, you really don't have to pay any more than your 53 US dollars delivered for this thing. So it's absolutely remarkable value. Um, of course, there's, there is that issue with the noise. We might do another video maybe looking into uh, ways to uh, you know, reduce that uh, perhaps. But yeah, um, this video is long enough already. But yeah, this is remarkable value. But we did have issues. I couldn't get the app working. I couldn't get the PC software. Or I didn't want to get the PC software working. Everything's a bit how you're doing um, in the in that respect but the build quality is great and the performance is there so yeah I'm I really like this I said shame about my uh, meanwhile well uh, power supply inside this thing the fans just constant I might have to look into that yeah this is a really great bang per buck so I'll link it in down below even though this one does have a few issues geez the value for money you've got to give this thing a thumbs up it really is uh, quite remarkable if you know of any uh, better value than this in a similar like uh, performance uh, spec wise then uh, you know please let us know but and if we can improve the noise that'd be fantastic and and it'd be nice if they added skippy support for example serial you know just regular serial uh, support but I'm sure as someone out there will just uh, decode the serial protocol and Bob's your uncle so anyway this thing's it's pretty impressive so I'll leave a link down below to uh, Raiden Reun Tech's um, the Ali official AliExpress uh, web store recommend uh, you buy it directly from them. there are resellers around and things like that but i don't know what the deal is so yeah anyway if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up and as always you can discuss down below catch you next time Hello.